students welcome to today's lesson in the last lesson you learned about the significance of enzymes in different application students today we learn about how do enzymes act as a catalyst or the function of enzymes as a biocatalyst so after this lesson you will be able to explain how enzyme slower activation energy and the mechanism of enzyme action. Let us start today's lesson. How do enzymes act as a catalyst? First of all, catalysts speed up chemical reaction. In order for a molecule to react, they must have sufficient energy. This energy to start off the reaction is called activation energy. Imagine a reaction in which substance A reacts with substance B to form substance AB. We can write an equation for this as A reacts with B to produce AB. A and B are the two reactants, and AB is the product. Then, this simple equation, or chemical equation, that represents A with B to produce AB, does not really tell the whole story. The equation gives only reactants, that means the starting molecules, and the product. It doesn't show how the energy changes as the reaction takes place. Okay? Therefore, the activation energy is simply is a push needed to start a reaction. If you look the first diagram, in this diagram, you see that somebody is pushing the reacting molecules to the top of the hill. Putting the reacting molecules to the top of the hill is one of the important criteria to start this reaction. Climb an activation energy hill before anything happens. But the activation energy in the first diagram is very, very large. But when it is supported with enzyme, the activation is energy is very low. You can easily understand that the activation energy of the reaction without enzyme is much more larger than the activation energy with enzyme. Under normal condition, very few molecules of A and B have sufficient kinetic energy to climb the activation energy hill. So the reaction proceeds slowly. Even if it is a spontaneously occurring reaction, but the reaction rate is slow. But a catalyst lowers the activation energy required for the reaction. Therefore, more reactant molecules can meet this lower energy requirement and so the reaction proceeds more quickly because the enzyme molecule is unchanged by the reaction. It can be used over and over again. So, 
a small amount of enzyme can affect a large molecule of substrate. There are two models or mechanisms of enzyme action. The first model is said to be the lock and key model. And this kind of model is proposed in 1894 by a German biochemist named Fischer. And the induced fit model, this is the second model, proposed in 1958 by Koshland. Both of these models suggest the enzyme catalysis, the reaction by lowering activation energy. Remember, there are two ways of enzyme mechanism. The first one is said to be the lock and the key model, and the second is an induced fit model. Both are models. They don't show the real conditions. However, they differ in the way that they explain how this activation energy happened. In particular, they differ in explaining how the substrate binds to the active site of the enzyme. Now let's look at the first model, which is said to be the log and the key model. This model proposes that the shape of the substrate molecule are complementary to that of the active site. Yes? Rather, like the shape of a key is complementary to that of the lock it fits. A useful way of thinking of complementary shapes is to think of an egg sitting in an egg cup, just shown in the diagram. The egg can sit inside the egg cup because the shape are complementary. That means it fits exactly to the egg cup. One egg cannot sit inside another egg because the shape are the same. The lock and the key model is said to be an older model and does not work for all enzymes. This is what you call the lock and the key model. The active site is there and the substrate is there. The substrate is exactly fit into the enzyme active site that then the enzyme substrate complex is formed. The lock and the key model, we said that it is an older model and it does not work for all enzymes. It doesn't work for all enzymes. The lock and the key model, again, it is a complementary substance, substrate molecule binds with the active site of the enzyme to form enzyme substrate complex shown as the diagram. The lock and key model, this model suggests the enzyme lowers the activation energy by providing alternative pathway for the reaction. For example, the non catalyzed pathway, it is a pathway in which reactant A reacts with reactant B to produce AB. The enzyme catalyzed pathway, however, reactant A with reactant B in the presence of an enzyme forms an intermediate and the intermediate with a, its a transitional state which will move towards the product AB, and finally, the enzyme is released. This model sees the enzyme substrate complex as an intermediate, which is part of the pathway that requires less energy than the normal pathway. However, a weakness of this model is that it does not explain shapes how the intermediate reduces activation energy. That is the weakness of this model. The second model is said to be induced fit model. This model suggests that the active site and the substrate are not naturally complementary in shape, as in that of the 
uh, key and lock model. But the binding of the substrate molecule produces conformational change, a change in shape in the active site. This allows the substrate and the active site to bind fully. That is simply to mean that in the induced fit model of enzyme action, the active site is flexible, not rigid, as that of the key and lock model. The shape of the enzyme, the active site, and the substrate adjust to maximize the fit, which improves catalysis. There is a great range of substrate specificity, but in the previous one, there is a little range of substrate specificity. In this model, the induced fit model, there is conformational change also put the substrate molecules under tension. So they enter a transitional state or a transition state and are able to react because of the lower activation energy. In the transitional state, bonds in the reactant are put under strain and break more easily and join with other bonds to form the product. The products formed leave the active site. This is the simple uh, diagrammatic representation of the induced fit model of enzyme action. This model is more consistent with a wider range of enzymes. A wider range of enzymes work according to this induced fit action. Most biologists now prefer the induced fit model over the lock and the key model, as it explains other properties of enzymes, such as enzyme inhibition, in more complete manner than the lock and the key model. The rate of chemical reaction is the rate at which reactants are converted into product. In the case of an enzyme-controlled reaction, this is determined by how many molecules of substrate bind with enzyme molecule to form enzyme substrate complex. The number of the molecules of reactants that form enzyme substrate complex with each molecule of an enzyme per second is said to be a turnover rate of enzyme. Now let us summarize an enzyme catalyzed reaction. When a substrate S fits properly in an active site, an enzyme substrate or ES complex is formed. Within the active site of ES complex, the reaction occurs to convert substrate to product P. The ES compl complex is converted into the product. The enzyme is released freely in order to be used again. The products are then released, allowing another substrate molecule to bind the enzyme. This cycle can be repeated millions or even more times per minute. The overall reaction for the conversion of substrate to product can be written as follows. The enzyme reacts with the substrate and produces an enzyme substrate complex. This complex is a temporary association of the enzyme with the substrate. And finally, the enzyme is released when the complex produces a new product P. That is the end of today's lesson. See you again. Mm -hmm.